Johnny Dollar. Dollar, the investigator? That's right, insurance investigator. Then you're the man I want, the man I need, immediately. Well, it just happens I'm late for an appointment, Mr. Uh, Mr. What did you say your name is? I didn't, but it's Lynch, Walter E. Lynch. And you must come out here right away, Mr. Dollar. Protect me. Protect you? Yes. Uh, I live over here in Manchester. Manchester, Connecticut? Yes, that's right. My address is 13421 Peach Tree Lane. 13421 Peach Tree Lane. Now, Peachtree. can you come out here right away? Well, I told you I have an appointment to keep. Well, then I hope it's a brief one. You'll come here as soon as you're through with it? Well, that depends, Mr. Lynch. What seems to be the trouble? Well, I thought I made it clear to you, Dollar. My life has been threatened. Well, isn't that something for the police to handle? The police? After all, unless there's insurance involved... Why, of course there is. My own. Oh, what company, Mr. Lynch? Uh, company? Yeah, that's right. Well? Now, what is the matter with you? What difference does it make? If my life is in danger, I need your protection. Okay, okay. Who made this threat against your life and why? Oh, good heavens, man. Do I have to go into that sort of detail on the telephone? Well, unless I know what this is all about and... Uh, look, you didn't answer my question, Mr. Lynch. Have you told the police about this? Do you think I'd call on you if I had? But if your life has been threatened, the and thing... And I do... tell you it has. What is the matter with you? All right, then. Call in the police. Now, you listen to me, Dollar. Meantime, if I find any legitimate reason why I should make an investigation... Don't you I'll... understand? I'm not asking for investigation. I'm asking for protection. And I tell you, the people but for now, you to look, call... you have my name, you have my address. Now, you get on over here. But don't you see? I, I can't... I shall be waiting for you. Mr. Lynch. Okay, mister, go ahead and wait. Of all the crackpots. Hmm. I wonder, though. Yeah? Johnny? Yeah, that's right. Pat McCracken, Johnny. Universal Adjustment. Oh, say, Pat, will you find out for me what company, if any, holds a policy on a Walter E. Lynch over in Manchester? Uh, sure, sure, Johnny. But listen, I thought you were going to be here in my office at 10 o'clock sharp. Pat, I, I'm sorry, well, but I this I need whole... your signature on a deposition for that arson matter you covered last I week. I know, I and know. And I've got to have it right away. See, one of our men will take it with him out to the coast on the 1030 plane. And, Johnny, it's eight minutes after right now. Yeah, I see it is. Pat, I'll be there in three minutes flat. Okay. Meantime, look up that Walter Lynch for me, will you? Okay. Just get on over here. Right. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Talk about best-selling records. Here's a familiar tune about America's best-selling filter cigarette, Winston. because only Winston has filter blend up front. Choice, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. No wonder Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Smoke Winston. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Eastern Trust and Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the hapless ham matter. Expense account item one, a dollar twenty plus another dollar for the cab driver who got me from my apartment to Universal Adjustment Bureau in record time. I barged in on Pat McCracken without being announced, put my John Hancock on the deposition after which he witnessed my signature. All right, there we are. Now, here you are, Miss Delsig. Give these to Mr. Peterson and tell him happy plane trip. Yes, sir, right away. Oh, and uh, see if Bartell has found any of that lynch information I asked him about. Hmm? He's been a lynching, Mr. McCracken? <laughs> no, no, no. J j just do as I say. Now, go ahead. But I thought I heard you... Uh... Yes, sir. 
<laughs> hey, what is the worry on this man Lynch, Johnny? Well, Patty sounded like a crackpot. He called me on the phone just before you did, said his life is being threatened. Oh, another one of those things, huh? Yeah. Who was threatening him? Oh, I don't know. He was, uh, well, he was a bit evasive about it, same as he was about naming his insurance company. Well, I know I never heard of him. What did you tell him? I told him to call the police, that unless there was some insurance angle that required investigation, you know. Right, exactly right. Although, of course, if Bartell does find something on him, if he is a client of one of the companies... Uh, it's served, still a police matter. Why call on me to play bodyguard? Well, you know, Johnny, if you would have your telephone number unlisted, you'd save yourself a lot of these nuisance calls. Yeah, I know. Oh, yes? Here's a photostat of the Lynch policy Mr. Martell uh, said you asked him for. Oh, then there is one. Thank you. And I, I thought you were talking about some kind of a lynching somewhere, Mr. McCracken. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Elsie. That'll be all. Well, I was only... Yes, sir. Uh, now, let's see, Johnny. Walter E. Lynch. Policy issued 1954. Eastern Trust and Insurance. Face value is... Hmm. Yeah, I see. 50,000 smackers. That's a lot of money. Let's see the name of the beneficiary. Oh, well. A nephew. Fred Lynch. New York City address. I wonder, Johnny. So do I. How well Freddie and his uncle get along. Named him as beneficiary. Five or six years ago, things can change, Pat. There's one way to find out. And with $50,000 to be paid out if anything does happen to Yes, him. yes. Go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead and pay Mr. Walter Lynch a little visit. At uh, company expense? Well, no. Uh... Well? Oh, sure, why not? I'll notify Eastern that we've assigned you to this, but that you'll send your expense account directly to them. Okay? Okay. <laughs> It was only about 13 miles from my place to Manchester, and I used my own car. But I saw no reason for not using the old expense account, so item two was 460 for a tank full of gas. The address Mr. Lynch had given me turned out to be in a rather nice residential section. The house was a small but attractive Cape Cod affair, surrounded by stately elm trees. And then I saw them, in the shade of the elms at the front of the place. A couple of police cars. a minute there, mister. Huh? Oh, hi, officer. Who are you and what do you want around here? Oh, my name is Dollar, Sergeant Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. I came here to insurance see Mr. Lynch. Insurance investigator, huh? Any credentials? Better let me see them. Oh, sure, you're yeah, okay. Here you are. Hmm. Hey, what's happened around here? Okay, Dollar. You boys act pretty fast, don't you? What do you mean? Is Mr. Lynch in some kind of trouble? I'd call it worse than trouble, Dollar. He's dead. He's what? That's right. Murdered. Well, then I'd better get inside there and see what's what. Yeah, Dollar. Sure, maybe you better. Inside the Lynch home, the police medic in my own eyes confirmed what Sergeant Beakley had told me outside. Walter E. Lynch was dead, all right. And there was no question about his having been murdered. Uh, as, you, as you can see, Mr. Dollar, the, the knife... Obviously, a long, very sharp one uh, uh, plunged into his body here, directly back of the heart. <laughs> yeah, Doctor, I see. No doubt penetrated that organ. Death must have been virtually instantaneous. <laughs> yes, yes. Any sign of the uh, murder weapon? We haven't found any sign of it here in the house, Dollar. Conroy's out back looking for it. And for any footprints that might give us a clue. That little rain we had last night ought to help in the footprints department. Only it doesn't. Now, whoever did this must have come right in the front door. Ah, uh, hi, Dollar. Hi, Conroy. Sergeant, you want me to see what's holding up the boys from the lab? Yeah, I'll give them a call. Right, you are. Meantime, Dollar, if you have any ideas... Oh, no, wait a minute. Ah, uh, oh. too late, I guess. What? If there were any fingerprints on that telephone, Conroy's probably it's covered him up. Conroy. Probably covered up. I'll anyway. Huh? Well, it wasn't the killer who called us about this. It was the old character who lives next door, a man named Halsey. Right now, he's back home in his rocking chair at the corner window, muttering to himself, trying to recover from the shock. Maybe when he does recover, he'll be able to give us some help. How did he find out about this? Seems he came over here to talk to Mr. Lynch about his nephew. Fred Lynch. Nobody answered his knock. The front door was wide open, so he walked in here and found this. So he picked up the phone and... You, uh... Know about Fred Lynch? I know he's beneficiary of his uncle's insurance. Another good motive gone to waste. What do you mean? 
You don't know about a couple three years ago when Freddy's mother died, left him a pile of money, only made the mistake of leaving it in charge of this one, this stiff we've got lying here? What happened? Well, this old crook finagled that young kid out of every cent of it so that by the time Fred was 25, entitled to it, that was about uh, six months ago, why Dollar Freddy ended up with nothing. Huh. His own nephew. That surprise you, Dollar? <laughs> it's because you don't live here in Manchester. Don't know anything about the Lynch family, what's left of them, which is only Freddy now. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Not one of the Lynch tribe was any good. Ask me, the town will be glad to see this one out of the way. Oh, I get it. Oh, what'd they say, Conroy? Somebody on the way over? Uh, Arker will be over as soon as he clears up a hit and run over on the east side. Mm, okay. Well, I guess there's nothing more we can do. Oh, go see who it is. Yes, sir. You about finished, Doc? Uh, Sergeant, <laughs> this, uh, this knife wound puzzles me. Puzzles me greatly. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean, Doc? Uh, very unusual instrument. Very long, thin, with a two-edged blade. <laughs> yeah, both edges very sharp. That's so? Yeah. <laughs> Very unusual. Sergeant, you said a neighbor, a man, Mr. Halsey, found him here? Yeah. Did somebody speak my name? Now, here's the man who was knocking on the door. Oh, uh, Mr. Halsey, come in. I don't know that I want to, Sergeant. With that poor man laying there dead. Mr. Halsey, this is Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. Eh? Insurance investigator? Yeah, I understand you came over here to talk with Mr. Lynch about his nephew, Mr. Halsey. Freddy, why that? That worthless young whisker, that... Well, why do you say boy. that? Well, because he, he never did a day of honest work in his life. The theater, that's all he cares about. Theater? In New York City, that pit of iniquity spends all his time with sinful people. Actors, <laughs> chorus girls, and the like. I take it you don't have much use for people in show business. Stop them of the earth. That's what they are. That's all they are. Yeah, and well... he's one of them. Now, Mr. Halsey, and if you... And when I saw him here this morning... What? He was here? No doubt come to beg some money from his uncle. Why didn't you tell me that, Mr. Halsey? Of course his uncle cut him off from the money his mother left him. Wouldn't you have done the same? Mr. Halsey, listen, eh? would you... Yes, well, wouldn't you? Look here now. The if... nectar he is in that, that, that sinful city down there. Wait a minute, you say that Freddy was here this morning? Yes, of course he was. When? That's why I finally made up my mind to come over here and talk to Walter about him. What time was he here? Well, from 9.30 to a few minutes of 10. Doc. Have you been able to fix the time of death? Uh, very, very close, Sergeant, yes. Uh, <coughs> by the uh, body temperature. What time would you say, Doctor? About, uh, <coughs> about 10 o'clock. Mr. Halsey, are you sure it was a few minutes of 10 when Freddie left here? Uh, well, of course I am. How sure? Well, I was sitting by the window listening to my radio like I always do. Thought you didn't like anything about show business. Uh, radio is different. Oh, thanks. Freddie left this house just before... The WDRC announcer gave the time as 10 a.m., and radio time is accurate time. I see what you meant, Sergeant, about a motive going to waste where Freddy was concerned. What are you talking about, Dollar? The doc says death was about 10 a.m. I know. So? And, Mr. Halsey, you're sure that Freddy didn't come back here after 10? What's the well, difference? Of course I am. These eyes of mine may be pretty old, but they never miss anything. Well, what's the difference, Johnny? Freddy's the one that killed him. Lord knows he's the one logical suspect. No, no, Sergeant. Doc says approximately ten. So, all right, it was a few minutes of before Freddy left here. So Freddy killed him. Now, look, everything ties up. Yeah, and the kind of a knot that's going to hang that no, boy. No, no, Sergeant, I wish it was that easy. Oh, of course it is. Motive, opportunity, everything. It all spells Freddy Lynch. No. Conroy put a tracer on him. All right, Sergeant. Sergeant, I'm afraid you're wrong. How can I be? That is, if Mr. Halsey is sure of his times. Of course I am. On the radio, okay, I Okay, Dollar, you. why? <laughs> because Walter E. Lynch was still alive after 10 o'clock. What are you talking about? How do you know? Because he called me on the phone. Because I myself was talking to him what? at exactly eight minutes after 10. Oh. <laughs> continue with act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in exactly one minute. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. 
Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Now here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Had dandruff for years, now get rid of it in three minutes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, embarrassing dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave hair up to 35% brighter. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Hapless Ham Matter. No question about it. I was the perfect alibi for Freddie Lynch. Freddie had left his uncle's house a few minutes before 10. I had talked with his uncle at eight minutes after 10. Yeah, and when the police checked up, they learned that Freddie had taken a bus to New York at 10.15. On foot, and he was on foot. Old man Halsey had seen that. He had to leave the house before 10 to make that bus. I told you, young man, these eyes of mine may be old, but they never miss a thing. He was on foot, all right, and he left this house before 10 o'clock, and he didn't come back. But now wait, back. wait a minute. If someone else came in here to commit the murder after Freddie left, why hadn't old man Halsey seen that person? You're right, Dollar. Nobody else came here, so it must have been Freddie killed his uncle. All right, now look, Sergeant. Only how could he? Because if you talked to Mr. Lynch at eight minutes after, and Freddie was on his way to the bus station, and he had wait, to be... Wait, wait, Sergeant. Then it's impossible. Dollar, this really bugs me. I right, listen, the murder weapon. Uh, uh, very unusual. <laughs> I know, Doc, you told me. It must have been something I'd never seen before. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Unless you feel the same way Mr. Halsey does about show business. Uh, what? Terrible, <laughs> sinful, iniquitous, immoral. Yeah, maybe you're right on this one. What are you getting at, Doc? I'm getting out. Was that an express, that bus that Freddie took to New York? No, it was a local. But I don't see what... with luck in my own car, I can beat him down there. Do you know where he lives, Mr. Halsey? I certainly do. All right, where? At 1231 West 43rd Street. Good. I'll see you later. Now, Dollar... All right, Sergeant, maybe you can fix any tickets for speeding I pick up along the way. Somehow, just lucky, I guess, I managed to reach the address in New York without getting pinched. A $10 bill of the superintendent, that's item three, got me into the rooms of Freddie Lynch. The walls were plastered with theatrical programs and playbills, most of them from summer playhouses, off-Broadway shows. In a closet, I found some costumes he'd used in various productions. In one corner was a battered shield with a broken spear beside it. Some heavy oriental belts and jewelry, the long robe of an Arabian desert rider with a sort of turban to go with it. Yeah, everything fitted in very nice. Hey, yeah, wide open, Freddy, wide open, just the way you left it. Come in, come in, kid. I beg your pardon? Kind of careless, but it's all right, it's okay. Hey, who are you? You kidding? Jerry Allen, the agent, you know. Agent? Yeah, where you been, Freddy? When you didn't answer the letter in the telegram I sent you, where you been, huh, kid? Oh, you're, you're a theatrical agent? What else? Listen, look, hey, kid, get this, I got a part for you, a great part, a great one, a good salary, too. Of course, you gotta let me represent you in the deal, but all I want's the usual 10%. Well, how about it, huh, kid? Jerry Allen, you say? Yeah, sure, that's right. Oh, we've never been introduced, but I caught you in half a dozen things, and you're good boy, good, real good. Well, I like to think so. Sure, sure you are. And being it's my business, I gotta keep adding to my stable of actors, see what I mean? So if you want this part, uh, well... I... I don't think so, what? Mr. Allen. What? What are you talking about? Well, I'm thinking of giving up the theater. Oh, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, kid. You've fallen heir to a fortune or something? Why do you say that? Hmm? Of course, if you don't want the part. Uh, no, wait. Uh, uh, perhaps I'd better do another play or two. Good, good. And you'll let me represent you? Well, Freddie. Oh, why not? Well, if the part is good. If the part good, it's great, kid. It's great. 
And if this thing doesn't hit Broadway the first time out... Hey, listen. Listen, it's a new play written by John Stone. You get that? John Stone? Uh, no, I I'm afraid I don't recall ever... I'm sure you've heard of him. Why, man, he's had more hits. Oh, and listen, Freddie, listen, listen to this part. <laughs> All right. I'm listening. Okay, starts out a young man, just about your age. Second act is 20 years later. Hey, you think you can do it? Why? <laughs> Uh, of course, my good man. Good, good. And the third act, well, now that part may be a little tough. You gotta kind of make like you're about 60. Why, <laughs> there's no problem at all, Mr. Allen. <coughs> no problem at all. Oh, only it's a shaky old man, like he's scared to death all the time. All right, <laughs> listen. All fear has clutched me by the throat. The overpowering terror. <laughs> Willing up. Oh, hey, that's great, that's great. Come on, keep it up, Freddy boy, keep it up. Well, you see, of course, if I had a script, I... Scared, remember? Scared. Say something like, uh, like, uh, you must come here right away to protect me. You? You must come here right away uh, to protect me? Oh, that's great, 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 great. Now, say my life is in danger. I've been threatened, Mr. Dollar. Oh, my very life is in danger. What? What? Dollar? That's right. Johnny Dollar. Why, this was all a trick. Yeah, and you fell for it like a ton of bricks. The same voice you faked over the telephone to sound like your uncle. Oh, no, no, no listen Killed him, Dollar. left his home knowing that nosy old neighbor would swear as to when you left. Then ran to the bus depot and called me up with that phony voice to make an airtight alibi. To make me ready to swear your uncle was still alive after you left him there dead. But, uh, Dollar, listen. See, I'm his only kin. I I'll be coming into a lot of money. His insurance... And whatever money or property there is... Oh, why don't I'll... you drop dead? I see. But do you see this? So that's what you did it with. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Arabian, isn't it? I stand Long, back. Long, thin blade with a double edge. From one of your costume plays... I'll stand back, I say. Sure, sure. I don't need to be close to you to use this. Oh, 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 oh my, my hand. You, you've broken my hand. Funny. I didn't think I was that good a shot. So now I'll have to make another deposition for the sake of another trial. And I'm sure that hamming it up in court won't keep Freddy from playing out the rest of his life in front of a captive audience. Expense account total, including a flock of incidentals, well, let's call it a hundred bucks. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's a word from our star about the case he'll investigate on next week's program. Thanks, Daniel. It's called The Unholy Two Matter and involves a pair of characters who fit that description perfectly. One of them a killer. And if you're at all curious about what to do when you've got the situation well in hand and then suddenly a gun is shoved into the middle of your back, well, join us, won't you? Right here on your favorite station at the usual time on Sunday. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Chet Stratton, Florence Dobkin, Sam Edwards, Herb Ellis, Ralph Moody, and Junius Matthews. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Next, Ray Bradbury's science fiction classic, Zero Hour, as suspense follows on the CBS Radio Network. Music